So I am back for some more work on this abstract landscape painting in acrylics, 24 by 36, on paper, placed vertically. Um, and uh, I kind of knew I wanted to get back to it, so it's been about a month since the last video. And also in the last video, I decided it was about 50% done. Um, and then I slept on it for a while and decided that this painting could actually um, go a bit longer. It might be 30% done right now. Um, and the main reason is that I want to build up some texture with the colors that are present already, just by adding more and more layers. and. Um, sort of leaving chance for um, interesting things to happen. So we have a lot of flat, solid colors and shapes on the paper already. And what I would attempt to do, um, which would actually end up taking the most time with this, was just mixing these colors again, um, all of them that are already there, and putting them over on top of each other again, um, or on top of themselves, rather and just going from there and seeing how that kind of adds texture and kind of creates this ghostly effect where shapes are actually, it's kind of gonna look like they're floating rather than sitting on the paper. Right now I'm actually really digging the composition and the colors too. Um, I think it's, uh, you know, well, it's well past a good start, uh, but everything seems to be vibrating sort of, which is really cool. Um, it's, you know, it's leaving a lot of things up to the imagination, which was really the goal. But there are some things that, um, you know, there's going to be some deletions and there's going to be some additions. Definitely these bl dark bluish lines um, are probably going to end up um, being covered over with the yellow. Uh, but, you know, things that just the paint did that um, I had no, um, you know, say in whatsoever, like these drips down at the bottom, especially they're probably going to stay in because it's just good to have a mix of control brush strokes and um, things that the paint do accidentally and definitely not from my doing. Lastly, uh, before we get started and before things get messy, um, I kind of uh, had this composition that kind of was created in my mind while I was letting this painting stew over the five weeks off that I had from it. And um, that's sort of good. It's good to have a direction, especially when a painting is nearing the halfway point, which this one is. Um, it's good to have a finished, you know, image in your mind of what it might look like. And that is basically um, some kind of a pile of different colors. Um, contrasting with, with each other, complementing each other nicely on this side, sort of cascading down and around behind this dark blue shape, which is going to be the center of focus. So we're going to need to make that bigger. And, you know, we're going to use, you know, um, all the uh, colors that can border each other that are possible without sort of seeming too flat. Um, and, um, it's kind of hard to explain that, but uh, you'll see what I mean when I get going on that. And so this is good. Uh, I have a finished composition in mind, and we're going to start um, with all that information, and let's get right into it. So I know I said just now that I was going to... Um, go ahead with uh, layering every color that's on here again, um, just to add more depth and texture to it. But I'm gonna go ahead with the pile that I mentioned before instead, uh, just to sort of get it on there, uh, see how it looks. And, you know, um, like I said, it's gonna be sort of this uh, diagonal of colors, varying colors going up and around that dark blue shape up top. And what I'm really trying to do is create a picture, uh, an image that's interesting. Um, that's really what it is. It's going to be more of a picture than a painting, actually, believe it or not. Um, and I could go more in depth into that. I might later, but um, not right now. We're just trying to get this 
nice sandstone, sandy color. I used burnt umber, some cadmium yellow light. I used my heavy gel medium and lots of white and mixed it up with some water. And I'm just gonna place it wherever I feel is necessary. probably could have used a smaller brush. I actually didn't even want uh, that big of a shape. Um, and so you know what I'm going to do is just scrape some of it away. Maybe can I bring back that red? I don't know. Well, definitely if I spray it. put a little more up here and yeah I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush this time so I'm jumping around a little bit now and um, I'm just going to go ahead and delete with a single sweep with my two inch brush that black circle that is up there in the corner. So sorry if you liked it and you were attached to it, but it's gone now. I mixed up more of that lavender. Of course, it's not gonna be the exact same, but like I said earlier in this process, cousins of colors are always good to have. So this is my two inch brush um, and I wanted to utilize some different techniques so I grabbed a larger wider flat brush and you can definitely see that that was used if you look closely enough so um, some interesting uh, varying techniques are already starting to take place in this painting I'm going to keep taking this color. I'm going to thin it out a little bit with water and see where else I can go with it. Probably some time to switch to a smaller brush, actually. sandy color is still wet so it's starting to blend with the blue very nice I think that's our first evidence of some blending can't forget to move diagonally too uh, we don't want all these lines and shapes to be moving um, horizontally and vertically that's going to enable us ultimately to get that um, vibrating, floating effect that we want with these shapes that occur in nature. <clears throat> Trying to imitate nature is what we're doing. like what the lavender is created with this the sand color and the orange color mm. so it looks like that could be something that's just well dare I say sitting there so yeah you know I said before this kind of reminded me of a field of wheat maybe um, that might have something to do with the yellow so Maybe if it is a field and that we have some things being, you know, um, kind of partially hidden in grass. So that could be, who knows. 
I can't even put words to it, but it's it's interesting right now. A lot of subconscious mark making happening right now. <clears throat> it's definitely harder when you're making a video, but I'm doing my best. Next step is to reinforce that dark, uh, navy blue shape right up here. Get a little more of that similar color. Um, this is going to be a really laborious painting and a lot of that has to do with just reinforcing the colors over and over again. It's which is going to give us the texture we want. I'm going to put a nice hard line in one corner. And maybe we have the indication of something man-made. Um, this out a little bit. Put this color somewhere else. Definitely need it down here. main goal was to reinforce that blue and uh, we definitely did with that hard angle which I think uh, I'm gonna keep I really like that Having trouble seeing this light a little bit. So as you can see, I'm continuing with that layering process. Unfortunately, I won't be able to continue the video like this. It's going to take a long time, and I'm going to run out of battery, no doubt. But um, I'll be sure to include all the interesting parts.